Carol Roth is uh, with me now. She is the author of the book, The War on Small Business. If you want to know what's happened in the last uh, year or so, uh, this book explains it all. What's more, it goes further and explains what you're up against. Carol, welcome to the program. Hey, Glenn, happy Friday the 13th. And, oh, jeez. Uh, I'm kind of feeling like we're in an economic horror show right now. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, so so let's go through the, the $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill. I just want you to talk about this in, in a way that w- uh, the average American can understand. Uh, this, you know, we've been saying, there's no infrastructure in it. Where's the bridges and the roads? It's not about that kind of infrastructure, is it? No, and the worst part is we actually have two bills, and they're more than three and a half trillion. So you have the more than one trillion dollar what they're calling the infrastructure bill, which is you know a little bit of infrastructure, but includes things like how can we tax you and keep you from going on the road, which I'm not exactly sure how that means uh, how, how that sort of. Uh, becomes infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But that's just sort of the tip of the iceberg. That has enabled this $3.5 trillion, and some people are calling it an infrastructure bill. It's really a budget resolution framework. And this, and I'm going to have the the exact quote from Chuck Schumer, the Democratic budget will bring a generational transformation to how our economy works for the average American. And if you don't have that super secret decoder ring, that is clear code for economy by central planning mandates. And I'm assuming we should have all expected this, given the fact that the head of the budget committee is none of none other than Bernie Sanders, who we all know is, you know, has been a communist synthesizer in the past. So not only do we have to sort of contend with this infrastructure piece, but on top of it, we have three and a half trillion dollars in terms of a budget framework. And I'm happy to, to go into detail on any of that. Uh, so I'd like to hear some of that because I, I think these two fit together. You know, it's they're bringing pieces of things together um, when you combine the two. And isn't the reconciliation also coming? Don't we have to have a budget reconciliation here in a month? That that's what this framework is. So, okay. so basically, by enabling the one plus trillion dollar infrastructure bill, that has opened the that has actually laid the infrastructure, pun intended, to get to this three and a half trillion dollar budget that they're going to do by reconciliation because they don't think obviously they can get the votes to pass it. So they needed the first piece, and unfortunately, we had nineteen Republicans who said, "Yeah, okay, that seems like a, a good." use of funding. Um, And so they're complicit in this. And unfortunately, the Democrats feel like they have this mandate, because even though we've had the central planning that has been accelerating, and you look at over the past year and a half, uh, all the things that they have done in terms of increasing inflation, disrupting the job markets, the supply chain, shuttering small businesses, throwing savers and retirees under the proverbial bus, and all kinds of other financial and individual rights atrocities you would think people would say, maybe central planners don't know what they're doing. But at the same time, they basically started conditioning people to want to get more reliance on the government. They had the stimulus payments. They had the enhanced unemployment benefits. They said, we're going to be there for you. And so that's really paved the way to this huge three and a half trillion dollar socialist wish list. So it is and the things the, 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 the I mean, Rubio and Lee were for enhancing the, the child tax credit. But that was something that you would get in April and you would have to have paid taxes. What instead right. the geniuses at the GOP signed up for and now Lee and Rubio are like, what are you crazy is a check from the federal government every month if you have children. So this is basically UBI, is it not? Yes, you hit the nail on the head. So they're calling it the child tax credit 
credit because, you know, you would be evil if you wouldn't want people to get early access to their taxes because they had to take care of their children, right? But it isn't, it isn't a tax credit because, as you said, you don't have to actually earn any income in order to get it, which means that it is a guaranteed payment from the government, which is one of those things like the stimulus and, and, and like these other endeavors that are paving the roads for constant guaranteed payments from the government and dependence on the government. And also things like universal pre-K and what I call quote-unquote tuition-free, because we know that somebody's paying for it, and that's Mm -hmm. you you and me and every average American community college. And it's being sold by the media, who's always complicit in this, as relief. It's relief for the families. And you have to ask yourself, What is it relief from? Is it relief from being responsible? Is it relief from taking care of your children that you decided to bring in the world? Is it relief from the incredible inflation that they won't talk about? I mean, (laughs) gas has gone up a dollar per gallon. Uh, I'm sure, Carol, you, you remember the days. I clearly remember the days when I would be counting my quarters at the gas pump and I could only put a little bit in my tank. You put $20 of gas into your into your truck or your car, it's not getting very far now. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing and it is this almost you know satire, you feel like you're in a Monty Python skit yeah. because as of a few years ago, the United States had become the leading producer of oil in the entire world and we had energy independence. And the Biden administration kneecapped that. They cut off the leases for oil and gas. They decided to shut down the Keystone Pipeline and and many other things. And now they're begging the cartel to produce more oil. I mean, it's just completely insane. And if you actually cared about the environment, you would say, well, I'm pretty sure that we do a better job in making sure that we take provisions to cleanly produce that oil and we're not shipping it across right we're not shipping it across an ocean (laughs) uh i mean it's 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 really nuts and now he is looking at the oil companies to see about price gouging and see where they are being illegal um this only makes sense is if you are trying to let's let's not say destroy the united states of america Let's say destroy the constitutional republic as we have it and the free market. It only makes sense if you are replacing oil with something else. And we know I was just talking to a guy who is um, out at Pebble Beach, going out to Pebble Beach uh, and is is high up in, you know, in, in, and knows about, you know, uh, very high end cars. And he was uh, telling me that all of them, except for Bugatti, will be all electric by 2030, which 2030 happens to be the Agenda 2030 timeline and the uh, World Economic Forum timeline and and I think the timeline of the Biden administration as well. I mean, this is all well coordinated and you see exactly it, it's coming together. They're doing it. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's so much to unpack there, and this is why I love talking to you, because I can go on each of these things for like 30 minutes. But, you know, I'm somebody who spends my life grounded in facts and reason and putting together data sets. And so, you know, I'm not off on wild conspiracy theories. But you're seeing the things that they're saying and they're doing, and it's out in the open. It's not hidden. <laughs> there's no, like, digging that needs to be done. They're literally saying the quiet part out loud. And so it's not unreasonable to believe there is some level of coordination there. And then you have, you know, as you mentioned, these sort of these green mandates. Um, I do happen to wonder if there is, uh, you know, some politicization of this, given the fact that so many of the red states rely on um, oil and gas in terms of the the big drivers of their economy. So Mm -hmm. I have to wonder about that. And then I saw all of these billionaires had banded together. It was Bezos, Gates, Bloomberg, and Ray Dalio, who is a major hedge fund manager. And they're investing in a company that is now mining for these 
green materials that go into the production of things like lithium batteries and yeah. whatnot to enable this green transformation. Mm-hmm. So the question is, you know, like, which is the chicken and which is the egg? Is it, Do they know that it's coming and so they're jumping on it? Or is it, hey, you know, this is the new way to make money, so we're all coordinating and pushing oh. it together? It sort of doesn't matter which one, right, because the outcome's the same. Well, there's a story out today. Bill Gates said he would commit $1.5 billion over three years to climate change projects with the government uh, that they're including in the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. He He's putting a $1.5 billion into the projects as a public-private partnership with the government, which is exactly what the Great Reset is, taking away the free market and putting in public-private partnerships that agree on ESGs. I'd like to get your comment on that here in just a second. So you're talking about this shift from more free markets, freedom, transparency, choice, property rights, to more central planning, where we have a handful of bureaucrats who are making decisions, including economic decisions, on behalf of the masses. They're using force. They're using coercion. They're using control. They're using opacity. And they're partnering, right? It's the it's the big government, it's the big business, and the big special special interests all partnering together to continue to consolidate power and move us closer to this centrally planned, or if you want to call it socialist or any other word, communist type of economy. And it is really frightening. And I want to go back to what you were saying about um, Joe Biden and the decisions that he made in, the, in the, the press release around OPEC, because he came out and he said that he was going to look into disruptions in the market and the, the disrupting of, of competition and, and market. Right. And it's just so absurd because they are the ones that are disrupting his administration that are disrupting the market. Yep. So not yep. only are they the ones that are limiting the supply from America, but remember what they've done to the jobs market as well. They kept people out of the jobs market, and that's impacting the price of gas as well. It's not just the barrel of oil. It's the fact that these trucking companies cannot find people to hire, and when they do find people to hire, they have to pay them more. So it's costing you more to get that gas to the gas station. So you are the one who is disrupting the market, and you're going to look into the corruption? I I mean, that's incredibly rich. Um, it is. It is also. I want to take you back to um, the. Oh gosh, what was it called? The crazy, um, uh, crazy things that they were teaching in schools. We, we helped stop it about four years ago. Common Core. Common Core. Well, Common if you remember, Core, remember yes. if you remember, Common Core was a Microsoft or a uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, effort. They really pushed that. And Bill Gates gave several speeches, and you could find them online, hurry, while that lasts, um, where he was talking about we need to get, uh, we need to produce uh, information about the children as soon as they can, because it, at, th- at third grade, we can then start to s- streamline this and start to train them for the jobs of the future that they would be best suited for. So it's a factory. Education becomes a factory Uh, to produce little workers for these giant corporations. The government also wants to control all of the the education, so they're good little government stooges. This is a total transformation, and when you understand how it all fits together, it, it, it makes sense, and you see exactly everything. Your world once again comes back together. You used to understand it. But once you understand this, your world comes back together. You don't like it, but at least it all makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it is sort of a, an indoctrination farm. You know, they're not teaching math and science and financial literacy or even coping skills, right, at this point in time. They're teaching racial equality and CRT and social justice and whatnot. Which won't help them at back- all. <laughs> <laughs> which goes back to this $3.5 trillion uh, budget resolution framework, which is now extending the pipeline of, of school. They want it to be in the pre-K business, 
and then they want to take you up through college. So it's not enough to own that primary and secondary education. It's not enough to nationalize the college lending business to the point where it has made it so expensive that people can't even get a return on their investment in terms of educations anymore. But now they want to start this pre-K. They want, they want to start putting these things in mm-hmm. people's heads earlier and so when you when you take that lens and you look at the things that they're proposing there's no, i mean you could make the argument before covid the 8 plus trillion dollars of spending at all government levels the thousands of laws the expansion of their purview that we already had this hybrid centrally planned economy if you start layering in pre-k tuition free community college laying the groundwork for Medicare for All by lowering the eligibility age for Mm -hmm. Medicare and expanding its benefits, these green initiatives. I mean, I don't know how you don't argue that we are basically moving to a socialist economy.